Hello people, I'm Bharat Acharya. Welcome to our new lecture on C programming. Today, we are doing practice programs. All three programs you're going to do today are very popular exam questions. Take your last 10 question papers, you'll find all of them, in fact some of them, multiple times asked. And they have to be. These are like the passage of rights. You call yourself a C programmer, you need to know these things at the back of your hand. Even in your interview, when you say you know C properly, these are the kind of questions they'll ask you to solve right over there on the table and you should be able to do it. The first one, convert a number from decimal to binary. Remember the childhood logic? Yeah, you take a number, you divide by two, you get a quotient and a remainder. Keep doing this till the time your quotient becomes zero. Take all the remainders bottom to top, that's your conversion. So you do a program for this. Yes, it's very, very frequently asked. The next one, we'll see Fibonacci series. Come on, you can't do engineering without having done this program in some language or the other. Of course, the logic is the same for all of them. What is Fibonacci series? Something so interesting. There's so many videos about it, which explain the occurrence of Fibonacci series in nature. And it's true. So how, how do you do Fibonacci? Your first two numbers are always 0, 1. After that, every subsequent number is a sum of the previous two numbers. Now, when this question comes to the exam, it can come in two ways. Either they can tell you find the first 10 or the first 15 numbers, or the first 20 numbers, etc. Or they can say find Fibonacci series up to so and so number. When they say they want the first 5, 6, 7, 10 numbers, that means they've given you the count. Yeah, think like a programmer. If they've given you the count, that means you're going to use for loop because you know how many iterations you want. Correct. But if they tell you up to so and so value, then you don't know how many iterations you want. Here you don't use for loop, you use a while loop because you know the condition. When your number exceeds the max, that's when you stop. So till the time it's less than or equal to max, you keep continuing. Anyway, so you'll be doing this using the kind of loop based on the kind of question that they ask. And then finally, another super popular question. Reverse a number and check whether the number is a palindrome or not. How many times have you heard of this? So as I said, these are all popular questions. They'll give you a number. The first thing you do is reverse it. This itself is an exam question. In fact, we've done this. What we had done this before was without doing it in a loop where we had assumed the number to be a three digit number or a four digit number. The size of the number was fixed. Today, we'll be doing it for any kind of number. Whatever is the size, our program will work because here we're going to use looping logic. So they'll give you a number. You'll reverse it. This itself, like I said, is a question. And then what is palindrome? Palindrome means forward, forward, reverse the same. So you compare these two numbers. No, they are not the same. So this is not a palindrome. But if they give you a number like this, one, two, three, two, one, even after reversal, it's one, two, three, two, one. Yes, I've reversed it. And then when you compare it, it is a palindrome. So yeah, these are the three programs that we'll be doing today. As I said, highly popular questions and they're all very simple to do. So is all of programming. Remember when we started off, I told you, you start with absolute simple programs. You keep doing it, keep doing it till the time programming becomes second nature to you. You think of a logic and you should be able to write the program for it. Once you reach that level, then before you know, you are actually solving exam questions. Like if I wouldn't have told you that these are exam questions, there would be no pressure. You'll be solving them and then it'll be, oh, look at your last 10 papers. They're all there. So anyway, that's how programming is. It's, it, it's just difficult when you've not started it. Once you start, once you get a hang of it and you're most comfortable with getting inputs and displaying outputs, that's the most, that's the bridge most people don't cross. Once you're comfortable with that, programming is pretty simple and it gets better and better as you keep doing it more. Anyway, now you're still waiting to join for that lucky day. Keep waiting. Time waits for no one. Many people have joined. Go ahead, continue. Down there is the link bharatacharyaeducation.com. Click on the link, register yourself as a user, take the C programming course, start learning. Hope to see you there. Wish you all the best. Do well.